Hey everybody, Steve Burns here. As you can see on my layers, I've blended a texture with my wall on the layer underneath it, utilizing a blend mode. What we're gonna do, learn to do next is how to take the same texture and create a texture brush. Now, it's currently a multiply blend mode. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down and go to normal, and this is what we're seeing in normal blend mode. I'm gonna turn off that layer on the bottom so we can work a little more effectively. And I'm also going to add a solid color, make it white, because I'm gonna create a brush, and I'm gonna bring that right beneath everything. I'm actually unlock this layer and bring it underneath everything so that if I turn it off, I'm gonna be getting white in the background. All right, now what may help me here is if I go ahead and actually apply that multiply blend mode, it's gonna bring some of that pure white through, and that helps. I'm gonna create a, I've created a brush which I'm gonna actually etch away and create something of a circular pattern. In other words, when I create the brush, I don't want this square shape when I stamp it. I want more of a, of a circular erratic shape so that it looks natural to whatever I'm gonna stamp it onto. All right, so I'm gonna go find a brush. I'm gonna hit my B key for my brushes, okay? Or target the brush command here. Right click on the bottom click of my Wacom stylus. And let's see what I have here already. And I've already used something that I created. I think I'm gonna use this here. It's a square brush. Let's go into the into the brush property so that you can get an understanding as to what I've done. Now, in this brush, go to my brush tip shape. I've got to, I'm gonna pull the spacing a little closer together because I really want this erratic edge there. That that's what I'm really interested in. Okay. Now, under the shape dynamics, I told it to alter the size over the length of the stroke. Okay. Now, and I even applied angle to I can I can switch the angle of this particular brush. I've also added some scattering, so I'm, that's where I'm getting that spacing in between um, each of these um, sets here of, of peaks, I should say, is this scattering. If I want to add more scattering, more of a count, I'm getting something like that. I'm going to keep it closer apart. I think that's going to work well for this texture. I apply transfer for pin pressure so I can control the pressure sensitivity as I'm pressing harder down or, 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 or lighter, I can apply exactly how much technique that I want. Once I change everything, I have to save this, a new brush preset, click OK, I'm gonna close this out, I don't need it anymore. Where did it put the brush? Right click, it's always the very last one, and there it is in front of me, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut this away now, probably a quick way to do so is just give this a layer mask so it's non-destructive. I can always go back and edit it and then make sure that I'm painting with black as my foreground color. And when I start to paint with black, you can see I'm etching things away. Now, I'm not totally liking this effect here. So I'm going to undo that. I'm gonna go back to my brush panel and I'm going to pull this down a little, make this uh, brush a little smaller. Go to my brush tip shape. There we go, make it just a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. There we are. So I was getting something closer to a cloud brush. So it wasn't giving me the effect that I liked. Now let me turn off scattering for now. Let's go to the brush tip shape. Let's pull it further apart. Like this. There. And I'm going to turn on scattering and see what I'm getting. It's being really temperamental. I'm going to keep scattering off. Pull a little bit closer. I'm gonna turn scattering back on and see if I can control this a little better. Um, I'm going to pull this back, there we are, like so. 
go back to the brush tip shape. Let me see if I can tighten it up a little bit like that. Bring it a little closer together. Go back to scattering and I'm just kind of visually assessing how this is going to look. Shape dynamics, play with the angles on this and see if I'm finding an angle that I might like better and I'm going to save that brush. So sometimes what will happen is you may not always get the effect that you want. So there we are. We go back and we mark. There we go. That's better. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Save that brush if I haven't done I, I, sometimes, I, sometimes I forget if I saved or not. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And I'm painting on the mask. Okay. So the idea is I'm making a little bigger brush. The idea here is to get rid of these square corners. Okay. Get rid of these square corners. We're going to make a more, a little bit more of a circular type of an effect. I don't want any straight edges going on here. I'm going to make a brush that's going to be give us some flexibility. I can make it a little larger. Give it more of a changing the brush size over time. All right. Now I'm going to go target this and I think I'm going to add a little more contrast to it. So command L for levels. And when I go to my levels, it's going to hit and bring that on over so we all can see that. I'm going to increase my stereo. I'm increasing the brighter areas a little bit more because I want to make the brush from the darker areas. All right, let's click OK. Now, what I what I recommend is that even when we brushed it away, we still almost have like this circular looking shape to it. And sometimes this might be a good idea just to, let me go ahead and, and undo that one and hit the end, make sure I'm editing. There we go, editing the mask. I might wanna come in here and give it a little bit more of a unique look in terms of the edges. Take away some of this, maybe make it look like some of these edges are like lightning rods kinda sticking out there. Okay, so get away some of this, these areas that's gonna give it that feeling that I actually made a circular shaped brush. So I'm going I'm just going to edit this to give it an unusual shape. Coming in here, doing it like so. And there is no rhyme or reason, just use your imagination, let your eye kind of take you into somewhere a little different, okay? There we are. I'm gonna take away some of this mid-tone area, but I'm gonna leave some of that there. All right, so I think you get the point. And I might even take some of this in, away in here, maintaining some of that. All right. So that's an unusual looking shape. Let's go to Command A, Edit Menu. And what's happening here, my, my Define Brush preset wasn't available because sometimes it is going to be a little bit too large. So I may have, what I might have to do is reduce the size of a file. Let's go take a look at the image size. Yeah, this is a very big file, 11 by 17. So let's bring this down to something like eight inches. Let's let it finish, there we are. So that is at a pixel resolution that Photoshop will like best. Now, what is the maximum size in order to create a brush? I actually don't remember, <laughs> okay? So just, I notice if I, there we go, brush preset. If I get down 10 inches or below, that's more than enough resolution for you to make a brush. That seems to work. Okay, we click okay, there's my brush. Isn't that pretty cool? All right, now, let's, um, turn that off. I have my brush. Let's turn on our photograph. Okay. I'm going to make a brand new layer. Bring the size down. Okay. Now I'm going to show you one last thing on this uh, brush, uh, you know, brush panel is I'm going to target the shape dynamics. And right over here, we have what's called brush projection. Okay, if I target that, and I'm gonna save that brush, I've made a little bit of a change. If I target that and tilt my pin, watch what happens. The pin shifts, I'm tilting my Wacom pin 
and it actually changes shape. So this helps you get you a little bit more of a of irregular looks so that so your your textures are not so um you know repetitive. And let's go bring it on up. I'm gonna bring it a little back here. Now on that layer, let's go change the blend mode to multiply. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my selection. And I'm I'm doing this on a separate layer right above here, right above this. And if I tap down and release, I'm not getting what I want. And the reason being is because actually I am getting what I want. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna make sure that my pin pressure is turned off and I'm not getting what I want because I was in white. And if I tap, there we go. Oops, that was too many taps, there. There we go, okay. Get in close, that's looking pretty nicely, okay? Now I turned off the actual pin pressure because I wanted 100% of that, te that texture to actually apply to this. Now, one last thing I would like to do as well is under my brush tip shapes for the angle jitter, I'm gonna take off, I'm going to also turn on the pin tilt. And what that allows me to do as you can possibly imagine, is I can actually tilt my pen around as I tilt the back of my pen in different directions. It'll look like I'm rotating my shape, which allows me to get different looking shapes. I'm gonna bring the tilt the pen out and tap on it, see? I can bring it over here, or maybe this way and tap on it to add some textures. And if I get in close, we can see we have a pretty convincing textures wall. If somebody actually looked at that and did not know you placed this on here, they wouldn't be able to tell. Okay, so it's a pretty cool little idea, these little textures. So what, what I highly recommend that you do is, is to take pictures of your own textures and start making a whole lot of texture brushes. I mean a lot, like 100 to 200 brushes. If you find a texture, make a brush from it and save that brush, okay?